Convention season 2018 kicks off this weekend with MCM Birmingham Comic Con on Saturday. I'm going to be there and these are my top 10 tips for making sure that you can get through to the end of the event without going hungry, getting sick, getting injured, just generally being miserable and having the best time you possibly can. If done right, Comic Cons, gaming conventions, massive events full of nerdy, like-minded people can be the greatest events of the year. If you do them wrong, though, they can be an absolute disaster. I know from experience, convention season has been the highlight of my year for the last six or seven years now. I'm well into double figures for number of Comic Cons attended, and I think in that time I've learned a few things. So let's count down from 10 to 1 my biggest tips to get you through a Comic Con weekend successfully. And you know what? I said we were counting down from 10 to 1. These aren't in any particular order. They're 10 things. I'm new to this list, Malarkey. Number one, if I hold this really quickly and move it around, you might believe that it is the thing. It, this isn't hand sanitizer. This is natural screen cleaner. Um, I don't actually have any hand sanitizer yet. I need to follow my own tip because seriously, this is particularly pertinent to gaming events. But at Comic Cons now, there'll be rows upon rows of video games to try or comics to fondle and board games to go and have a look at and handrails that you touch as you're on your way down the stairs to the toilet or queuing up for a signing or whatever it might be. Bottom line, these are events with thousands upon thousands of hot, sweaty people who could have no end of diseases they brought in from all over the country, sneezing on stuff, going to the toilet without washing their hands, blowing their nose on their sleeve of their cosplay outfit, whatever. I mean, just, it, it's disgusting. Just think about it for a moment. You're there on the Sunday afternoon of a four-day gaming event, and you think, what's the worst thing that could happen, me trying this PS4 demo four days into this event? Well, I'll tell you the worst thing that could happen. The worst thing that could happen is you're touching a games controller that hundreds if not thousands of people have touched over the previous three and a half days it's dirty you will get ill you need hand sanitizer i mean at a push screen cleaner would probably be better than nothing you just need to keep yourself clean wash your hands i shouldn't have to say this to adults but i was caught out probably my, I, i'm a slow learner i was caught out probably my first two or three times visiting these kind of events until i spotted the pattern of i go to an event have a great time and then i'm really ill look like three days later it's because of the germs and um, the hand sanitizer is one step towards eliminating the germs and that you want to eliminate the germs. Number two, I do have an example of, you want to bring your own snacks and water. I, I don't have any snacks in here because I'm on a diet. I do have water though. And it, I mean, it's mainly because this stuff is so expensive in these events. They have a captive audience. One of these is going to cost you as a minimum two quid if not more. The bigger the event, the more they will charge you for things like this. And if you think, like me, you're on a diet and you better get yourself a healthy snack somewhere in Comic-Con, you are going to be desperately disappointed. If you want a Twinkie or a six-pound hot dog, you're in the right place. If you want an apple, you, you're really not. You, you're going to need to bring that stuff with you. So you want at least a couple of these. Like I say, it gets hot in there. You want some water with you so you don't have to buy it at an extortion price while you're there. And you want to take something to eat so that you don't get into the situation where you're so desperate that you have to eat a Twinkie. Remember, those things could survive a nuclear bomb. Something you'll absolutely be wanting is one of these. A mobile phone charger. I mean, it doesn't have to be as enormous as this one. This has enough juice in it to recharge my phone, I think, 12 times fully recharged charged i ain't running out of phone battery over the course of the weekend but also i can plug cameras into this i can plug drones into this i can plug my ipad into this i've never tried plugging my laptop into it i wonder it probably could this is going to keep me fully charged for the entire weekend and if it's a multi-day event i can charge this up in the hotel and use it again and again throughout the weekend. It is absolutely invaluable. The last thing you want, especially in the bigger events where they're super busy and you are going to get separated from the people you go with, you don't want your phone dying. And that does link into number four because your phone is one of the big things that can help you with number four. If you're planning on queuing for stuff, so if you want to play video games or you want to do signings, if there's something you want to queue up for, you're going to need something to keep you amused in that queue. I know I've read lots of guides for how to survive at Comic-Con and they all say, make friends in the queue be sociable that's fine if you like 
people. I'm afraid of people. I don't want to stand in the queue and strike up a conversation with somebody new. I want to keep myself to myself. That's what my phone is for. That's what my Nintendo DS is for. If I was fancy, that would be what my Nintendo Switch is for. Or, you know, it's Comic-Con. Buy a comic book. You just want something to keep you amused in the queues so you just don't go mad while you're there because that's when the bad tweets happen. And talking of buying a book to read while you're there in a queue, Something to bear in mind is everything you buy while you're there, you are going to have to carry home with you. It seems really obvious. And if you're just there for the day, you kind of do keep that in your mind. But there's only so many times you can fall into the trap I've fallen into many times of Comic-Con weekend. Get down there on a Friday, get yourself booked into your hotel. Yeah, you're super happy, you're excited, you head straight over to Comic-Con, you buy six books, take them back to the hotel. It's no trouble carrying these six books. No worries at all, you're back on a Saturday. Four Funko Pops today. I'll also have a poster, uh, a couple of T-shirts. Oh, that baseball cap looks good. What's that? A massive framed picture that I can hang on the living room wall. Yes, we've previously bought from a Comic-Con a massive framed picture that we can hang on a living room wall. Getting back to the hotel. This is no... I mean, this is less convenient carrying on the tube than the books were yesterday. It's fine. And then it comes to Sunday morning. You're checking out of the hotel. You've got your suitcases. You've got your bags. You've got Friday's books. You've got Saturday's purchases. And suddenly you realise you have have absolutely no way of transporting these around London. Never mind transporting them around Comic-Con when you get there because you check out of the hotel on the Sunday morning. You want to spend Sunday still in the event. You could check into the cloakroom, but you didn't get there early enough to use the cloakroom. That's a bonus tip for you. Get there early enough to use the cloakroom if you've got loads of bags. And you're just basically stuck all this stuff that you thought was brilliant on Friday and Saturday when you were excited, when you were buying it, you come to loathe on Sunday when you've got to carry it around. And I have genuinely been stood in the middle of a convention hall on a Sunday afternoon and thought about a book that I bought the day before. How much do I really want you? Shall I just leave you here? I don't know if I can carry you around for the next six hours. It does link in to tip number six, which is take the right bag with you and take a spare bag if you're a nerd like me you need a bag to fit your laptop and all your camera gear in and all that stuff normal people you just need something to put your clothes in maybe don't fill that up on the way down if you're if you're traveling there with a full suitcase you're going to be traveling back with a full suitcase and a load of bags of junk you've bought even if you don't plan to buy anything it's comic-con you're going to buy something leave yourself some space in the bag or even better do what our friend pab does because he always blows my mind when he gets there on a sunday afternoon and his bags are full and he's struggling a little bit and rather than moaning about it he just gets his spare bag out of his first bag and just double bags it because he's a genius and i've seen him do it so many times and I never remember to do it. I've even bought a bag specifically for that purpose now and I just know I'm going to forget to take it but if you can remember to take it it's a brilliant thing. You want bag space, you want lots of it and a spare bag will never do you any harm unless it's like an extra suitcase and you can't carry it. Comfortable shoes at Comic-Con are a must especially if you're as unfit as I am. My record for steps in a single day at a convention is 30 thousand steps in one day 30,000 steps translates to like 12 miles of walking in a day that's a half marathon in a day three or four day events you're basically doing more than a marathon over the course of a weekend and a lot of nerds are as fit and healthy as I am we're not built for doing marathons in a weekend our backs are going to hurt we need a good bag. Our feet are going to hurt. We need good shoes. You want arch support. You want the kind of shoes that your, your mum would have wanted you to wear to Comic-Con. Of course, what you'll do is what I do, and you'll pick your nerdiest pair of Converse high tops with Batman on the side and your Twitter handle on the back, and you'll wear those, and you'll moan about them all weekend, and your feet will hurt when you get home. If you've got that sensible bone in you, wear a pair of hiking boots. You won't regret it unless anyone takes a photograph of you, but that and you got a way up do you want a comfortable comfortable feet do you want to look good in pictures i i want comfortable feet but i know i'm going to wear my my scooby-doo shoes we've talked a lot about buying things at the event and as we move each each year as we move further into the future more and more stands at comic-con have started taking card or allowing you to pay by paypal there is still a significant proportion of places at comic-con though where you can only buy stuff if you pay with cash 
most of these convention centers if you're lucky will have two cash machines and if you're lucky they'll still have cash in them roughly two hours into the event before they run out the queue's out the door there's no way to get cash in the event even if you get to the front of the queue there's only 50 pound notes left no one wants a 50 pound note but all the tens and twenties are gone and you're never going to see a fiver if you've got a budget for the weekend just take it all out as cash and take it with you if you don't have a budget for the weekend congratulations on having all of that sweet sweet money that you don't need to worry about how much you're spending i would genuinely suggest to anybody get an idea in your head of what's the absolute maximum you want to spend for the weekend draw it all out as cash then leave your wallet lying around in a bar where i am so i can take it or you know just be careful with it but take cash take take enough cash to get you through the weekend don't don't take thousands that was that was quite bad advice. You don't want to get mugged for all your money, but at the same time, you don't want to get in that cash machine queue either. It's a balance. You've got to strike. What I tend to do is I get enough cash out for the Friday and take it with me, and then at some point on the Friday night when I'm out about in town, I will I will go to the cash machine again for Saturday, and then I'll do the same Saturday night for Sunday. And then, I mean, I only then usually have to top up two or three times each day from various cash machines when I do it that way, so it works a treat. Number 10, <laughs> think is anyone keeping count of these i had them all written down but i've not even done them in the order i wrote them in early access is absolutely worth the extra money no matter how much extra money it is i have previously done more in that two hour early access you get between 9 a.m and 11 a.m than i have in the rest of the weekend combined you get to you if you plan it right if you've looked at the map in advance on the website you know what you want to see you can see everything you want to see in that two hours before the doors open and it's just shoulder to shoulder and you can't move and then you just spend the rest of the weekend just hanging out with people meeting up with people who you know off the internet or going out and sitting in circles all dressed as cats or some of the various things that people do at these comic-con events i genuinely think if you're there to actually look at stuff go to panels buy books play games what if you're there for a specific purpose you've got to get the early access because if you don't you're just in for a real miserable time if you can't get the early access go on the friday if you can't go on the friday or if there isn't a friday go on the sunday afternoon whatever you do if, it, if you've never been to a comic-con before don't buy a ticket for the saturday plan to get there just after lunch and expect to be able to do anything other than get really angry really quickly when you genuinely cannot move saturday afternoon in a convention I've experienced it a couple of times because usually that's when I just leave. If I'm there for the weekend, I'll just head out into town and come back on Sunday because Saturday afternoons are insane. But Saturday morning, 9 till 11, is absolutely brilliant. And lastly, as a bonus tip, and this one does send you towards one of my very first YouTube videos from several years ago now, they have a lot of these convention mystery boxes at conventions. Now, I haven't bought one of these for years because two years ago, I did buy them. Me and Sheepdog bought three they were on a, a three for two so for just 60 pounds we could get three mystery boxes i mean I'll, I'll leave you to watch the video if you want to know why that was a bad idea but bear in mind this was only two years ago i think we ended up with four iphone 4 cases and nothing good for 60 at one point in the video in fact i'll get future kev to just put it up on screen now I, I, we pointed the camera at what 60 pounds worth of stuff looks like or in actual fact 90 pounds because it was three 30 pound boxes it just so happened we got one of them one of them for free but this is what 90 pounds worth of mystery box goodies look like um so this is 60 pounds worth of stuff apparently um that's mine and that's why you shouldn't buy the mystery boxes. If you want 90 quid worth of stuff, take 90 pounds and go and spend it on things that you want. Do not get a mystery box at all. I think that just about concludes my top 10 or 11 or 12 or maybe 9 tips for survival at Comic-Con. If, if you're a Comic-Con veteran like myself, feel free to add to my tips down in the comments down below. And when I inevitably remake this video later in the year to try and get some of those sweet, sweet comic-con views again then I'll, I'll include your tips as well um, if you have enjoyed it please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me subscribe to the channel for more stuff like this and daily vlogs and various other bits and pieces thank you very much for watching